Hi folks and welcome to Intermediate Bird Identification. I'm Leanne Latchmore from Birds Canada here in Saskatoon. This video is made in part to support participation in the Saskatchewan Breeding Bird Atlas, a citizen science project that aims to determine the status and distribution of birds that nest across Saskatchewan. With that, let's get started. In this video, we're going to be focusing on a group of birds that we've termed floaters. These include loons, grebes, cormorants, and pelicans. And as always, the focus is going to be on adult birds that nest here in Saskatchewan, but many of these species, again, can be found across the prairies and indeed the much of rest of Canada too. Let's start with the common loon. Hopefully this is a bird that is familiar to most of you. It's a large water bird that's an expert diver. It's got its legs quite far back on the body, making it almost impossible to walk on land. It's got a large pointed bill. Males and females are similar, and they both got a black head and a nice collar of white stripes. They've got a black and white checkered and spotted back, giving them a really kind of detailed overall appearance. This is a really nice looking bird. And so when you're out there on a lake taking a look at, you know, a fairly large bird that's got a pointed bill, um, likely you're, you're probably looking at a common loon. And the habitat of these guys is large clear water lakes with small fish. Now here in Saskatchewan, you're much more likely to encounter them up in the boreal forest. We have a lot of those kind of nice clear water lakes with small little fish, but you can find them on a few lakes in southern Saskatchewan as well. All right, next up we've got grebes. These two are expert divers and they've also got pointed bills. They do also have their legs set very far back on their body, which makes them awkward on land as well. And as a group, they have basically almost no tail. Their, their tail feathers are greatly reduced to these little wisps that you really can't tell um, you know, by looking at them at all. So if you're wondering if you have something like a duck or a grebe, a good spot to look is the rear end. And if they've got kind of you know these fluffy feathers on their rump, you're looking at a grebe. So that is a helpful tip for, for trying to figure out um, which kind of floater you might have. So let's dive into the grebes. So first up is the pie bill grebe. This is a small compact grebe. It's gray brown overall and it's got a distinct thick bill which is whitish with a black ring. Um, it's a very secretive grebe and they often play what I like to call submarine when they're disturbed. Um, grebes are neat, in, especially the pie bill grebe, in that they can really alter their buoyancy by compressing their feathers and, and reducing the amount of air that's trapped in them, making them sink a little bit. And so they'll often do this if they're not, you know, super disturbed, they'll sometimes slowly sink under the water surface while watching you. Sometimes they'll dive quickly. And if you can find them on the other edge of the wetland, they'll often just kind of float back up to the surface and they do this with their with their feet. They will pop their heads back up and take a look to see if you're still out there looking at them. And if they are, they'll sink their head below the surface like, no, nah, we're not doing this today. Um, they're really funny little birds, which I which I I'm quite fond of. Um, you'll find these birds in wetlands with emergent vegetation. And I should note that with all the grebes, um, the sexes are similar. So. Next up, we've got the horned grebe. This is another small grebe. It's not quite as compact. It's a little bit more elegant than the pie bill grebe. It's got a short pointed bill. It doesn't have that big chunky one that we saw in the pie billed grebe. And it's got a relatively flat topped head. Now it's got a yellow patch behind the eye, and so these are feathers that can actually be raised or lowered, um, depending on what the bird is trying to signal. And otherwise they've got a black head with a rufous neck and uh, rufous flanks, and the rest of the back and back of neck is black in this bird. You'll find these birds on small ponds in pairs. A similar looking grebe to the horned grebe is the eared grebe. So this is another small grebe. It's got a short, delicate pointed bill, but it's got more of a triangular shaped head. That peak is like right in the middle of the head. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a second here. It's got these wispy yellow plumes behind the eye, so it doesn't quite have that solid patch. And you know, you just should note that, especially with these wispy kind of feathers, and especially in a bird that's going to be diving underwater and getting wet, those feathers can sometimes get clumped together, so it can look superficially like a horned grebe at times. Um, overall, this bird is black with rufous flanks, and it's missing that kind of red throat patch that we saw on the horned grebe. These birds actually nest colonially, so you'll find them oftentimes in large groups, and these also nest in wetlands. So let's compare those two similar grebes side by side, shall we? 
So here we've got the horned grebe and the eared grebe. So the horned grebe has a generally more flat topped head or the peak is much farther back depending on if they've got those feathers raised or not. The eared grebe is going to be more of a triangular shaped head. Um, and this is really that that head shape is the best um, identification clue you can use because oftentimes you're seeing these guys at a fair bit of a distance and if you don't see them in very good light, um, a lot of the other color features like the rufous neck or the black neck are really hard to tell. Those dark colors don't um, travel super well always when you're looking at them across a wetland. Um, so on the horned grebe, that that patch of feathers is going to be solid yellow um, and it's going to look wispy in the eared grebe, but remember they can clump a little bit. And the horned grebe, you're definitely going to find these in pairs on small ponds and eared grebe is going to be found in groups um, in other wetlands. So, but that, that head shape is kind of the best thing you can do um, to get familiar with to identify these two species. So I'm just going to blank out um, the backgrounds on these and you can see that that head shape really stands out. So if you're looking at them from a ways off or if lighting isn't terribly good, um, you can still tell these two species apart by their head shape. A much larger grebe is the red-necked grebe. It's got a long neck with a long, heavy bill. It's got a dark body with a rufous neck, and it's got a silvery cheek patch, which is rather distinct. And that silvery cheek patch, that, that bright, shiny, um, kind of white gray really travels a long distance. When you're looking at a lot of water birds, white is a really helpful color to look for and note because it's reflecting back all of the light spectrum. So that white cheek patch is really highly visible on these birds, even at a great distance. Um, and these are birds that you're gonna be finding on lakes and ponds with emergent vegetation. So they, you tend to find them on much larger water bodies than the last couple of grebes that, that we've looked at. So that is our red-necked grebe. Another large grebe found in the province is the western grebe, and as we'll see in the next slide, the similar Clark's grebe. So this is a bird that has a long slender neck with a long, thin, dull yellow olive bill. It's got bold black and white coloration with white cheeks, neck, and underparts, and it's also got dark feathering around the eye that surrounds the eye completely, and they do perform quite elaborate courtship rituals. Um, if you've ever gotten to see this in person, it is really quite magical the way these birds um, basically dance on the surface of the water. I highly recommend checking out some videos of um, Western Grebe courtship displays after this. Um, in the photo on top you can actually see that it's ferrying around its young and this is something really cute that Grebes also do. Um, you'll find them nesting in colonies on large bodies of water with emergent vegetation. So let's take a look at that Clark Grebe. So it's also a large grebe. It's really um, essentially identical to the western grebe um, and the difference there is the, the feathering around the eye and the coloration of the bill. So until the 1980s, like 1985 to be specific, they were considered just a light morph of the western grebe. Um, but they were split into a separate species and so these guys have that bright orange bill as opposed to a dull yellow olive bill and the white feathers surround the eye completely. Now these are much more rare, especially in Saskatchewan um, when compared to the western grebe. So by and large you're going to be seeing western grebes and only a small fraction of them might be Clark's grebes, but it's one of those things where you need to see them up close um, and get a good look at the face and bill color. And bill color um, can be tough to tell sometimes depending on the lighting. These two nest in colonies on large bodies of water with emergent vegetation and you'll often see them interspersed with western grebes. So let's take a look at those two side by side so we can really get a sense for um, those feathering around the eye and that bill color, shall we? So here we have the two side by side. So you'll note that the bill on the western grebe is kind of dull yellow to olive colored and it's really quite a bright orange on the Clark's grebe. On the western grebe those feathers surrounding the eye are all black and in the Clark's grebe the eye is completely surrounded by white feathering. Um, the western grebe again quite common especially in Saskatchewan and the Clark's grebe is going to be much rarer so when you're seeing um, large groups of Western or Clark's grebes, they're 
mostly going to be Western in large part. I've actually only ever seen one Clark's Grebe myself, and I have spent an awful lot of time looking at wetlands in the province, but I just wanted to make sure that you guys were aware that there was another Grebe in the province that looks quite similar. Um, there are hybrids and intermediate birds do occur, and you can't always identify those intermediate birds. So just something to be aware of, but the one that you're going to see most likely and most commonly is the Western Grebe. Now we've got the double crested cormorant, which is not a grebe, but it is another large water bird. It has a long neck um, with a slender hooked bill, and adults are black all over with orange bare parts um, and you know orange at the base of the bill. Younger birds are a little bit browner, and these are also expert divers, and they sit very low in the water. Um, they don't have feathers that repel water, and so these guys will spend much of their time drying off in that posture that you see in that top photo there. So you will see these guys doing this in the sunshine, um, or even if it's cloudy, they'll be, you know, trying to dry their feathers so that they can take off. Um, I've actually seen these guys out in the wild swimming underwater. I was standing on some um, old cement blocks and I was trying to fish and, you know, in swam this just incredible looking bird. So they look kind of gangly on land, but underwater they swim like these incredibly elegant snakes or torpedoes. It's, just, it's a really incredible bird to watch if you ever get the chance to see it in a, in a clear lake. You'll find these guys on uh, larger bodies of water where fish are present, and they're also a colonial nesting species, and you will find them nesting on islands with trees or on the ground, um, and they tend to often, um, through their droppings, kill the trees that they nest in, so you'll, you'll find them nesting in um, bare, sticky trees. And last but not least, we've got the American white pelican. This is a very large water bird. It too has a long neck, but it's got that incredible long pouched bill. And the bill actually grows this weird kind of fibrous horn during the breeding season. Um, and it's actually shed after the breeding season as well. And both males and females do grow this kind of horn. Um, it tends to be a little bit larger in males, but both sexes will produce it. Um, adults are white with black flight feathers. And so all of the feathers on the wing in an, in an American white pelican are going to be black, all of those flight feathers right there. Um, what's neat is that these birds will actually feed cooperatively. If you've ever had the chance to watch this, it's pretty cool. Um, they will kind of scare up amphipods and I'm guessing also little fish as well. And they will circle in really, really tight and they'll all plunge their head in and scoop up um, whatever it is they kind of corralled together as a group. So um, they are, they are neat birds to watch. You'll find these birds on large water bodies where fish are present, and they also nest, uh, nest in large colonies on islands on the ground. And that wraps it up for this video. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. At Birds Canada, we're always happy to help you learn to identify birds and have citizen science programs for all skill levels. Visit our website at birdscanada.org or follow us on social media at Birds Canada to learn more or to get involved. If you have any questions or comments about the video, you can reach out to us at skatlas at birdscanada.org. And lastly, do check out the Saskatchewan Breeding Bird Atlas website at skbirdatlas.ca. Um, and follow us on Facebook where we post links to upcoming workshops and other training opportunities. Thanks again and happy birding!